Hey there, hope you're having a good day. Today we're going to look at how to get your podcast into all of the top podcast directories, whether that's Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or pretty much anywhere else. We'll get you in there today. I'm Colin Gray from thepodcasthost.com. Let's get into it. So you know, most podcast creators started out as podcast listeners. I was just the same. I remember having to download all my podcasts from iTunes back in the day, now Apple Podcasts, of course. And when I started a podcast, I remember thinking that's the first thing I need to do is make sure I know how to upload my podcast to Apple Podcasts or iTunes at the time. And then I knew I wanted to start a website as well. So I needed somewhere to direct people to a website of some sort, a home base for my podcast. So I thought I need to upload my podcast to there as well. Well, the thing is, I was a little bit off base with both of those. You don't upload your podcast to either Apple Podcasts or to your own website. There's a good reason for both. And I'll go into all of that on this video. If you want a bit more detail on why you shouldn't really host podcasts on your own website though, why podcast hosting is a good idea, check out a link in the description below for a full article on that. We won't go into that in too much detail here. But we will go into why you don't upload to Apple Podcasts themselves, to Spotify, to any directories, and in fact, where you do upload your podcast to. So where do you upload your podcast to? Well, it sounds simple, but there's a couple of little steps in here I'm just going to explain to you, and then we'll go into deep depth on that through the rest of the video. I'll show you exactly how it all works. But it's three steps, okay? And this kind of differs from the very first setup through to your weekly routine. But when you first set up your podcast, there's three steps to this. First is a podcast hosting platform, okay? The podcast hosting platforms are where you store your audio files. And good ones will help you with all of the rest of the steps as well. Because the second step is then, and this is a one-time only thing, you'll submit your RSS feed, you'll submit your podcast to all of the podcast directories via your podcast hosting platform. Again, I'll go into how that works a little bit later on in the video. But just know for now that your podcast hosting platform will help you send that RSS feed to all of the directories, that's Apple Podcasts, Spotify, all of the rest, and that's only a one-time thing. You only have to do that once and then everything goes to those directories automatically. And then the final thing, tying in your website, you know, your home base for the podcast, then you place players from your hosting platform onto the website. And that's relatively easy as well. I'll talk about how exactly that works. Now, if you wanna choose a podcast hosting platform, one of our recommended ones that works well with podcasting, with directories, with your website, check out our article on best podcast hosting platforms. You can go and see the ones we recommend, the top three or four in there, do everything I'm gonna talk about over the rest of this video. It's also worth mentioning, just before we move on, that our tool, Alitu, our podcast maker tool that does recording, editing, audio cleanup, all that stuff, has hosting in it now as well. So you can go and use the hosting in Alitu and I'll distribute to the directories too. But you can see that described in our hosting article as well once you get there. So go and check that out for a full guide. So what is a podcast host and how do they work? Let's get into that just for a second, just to make sure you understand. So a podcast hosting platform is a place where you actually upload your audio files. So you sign up, you create an episode, you upload an audio file to that episode, and then you put in some episode details like the title, the description, all the other metadata bits, like if it's explicit, that kind of stuff. That goes into your episode within your hosting platform. You create all of your episodes. Every week you make a new one in your hosting platform. You upload a bit of audio to that episode. And the hosting platform's job really is to organize all of those episodes into what's called an RSS feed. You don't need to know how RSS feeds work. You just need to know they're a kind of coded up page that is a summary or a full guide actually to what's in your podcast. And the RSS feed is what the directories read and then deliver to your listeners, okay? It's kind of this little Cody bit in the middle. Nobody needs to understand it, but it's the place or it's the thing, the tool. The RSS feed is that tool that translates from the files and the data that you upload to your listeners actually being able to look through your directory um, of episodes and listen to all those episodes. Now, there's two ways you can use a podcast hosting service, okay? One way is you just use it for the audio, all right? You upload your audio, you publish those episodes, and it goes out to uh, an RSS feed, it goes out to the directories. But really the home base for your podcast is your own website, 
So you use the podcast hosting service alongside your own website and you publish the episodes from the hosting service to your own website, whether that's WordPress or Wix or Squarespace or whatever. Now, that's one way to do it. The other way is that you can actually use a website on the hosting service. Nearly all of the top hosting services can create a website for your podcast, so it'll run it for you. So why would you choose one or the other? Well, I mean, pros and cons. It's really simple if you set it up on the second way, all right? If you have your host run your website, you don't need to run a WordPress site, a Wix site, a Squarespace site. Cost is not extra, you know, you don't have to set up an extra one that you have to pay for. Uh, there's a fair bit less sort of technical setup. So, uh, you know, it's quite easy, it's low maintenance, but it is quite restricted. Usually these host-based websites don't have a whole lot of fun functionality in them, not a lot of customizability. You might not even be able to brand them very much to look like your show. Whereas if you set up your own website separately, whether again, that's WordPress, Wix, Squarespace, you have so much more power over what goes on that website. Growth tools particularly, so installing an email list, for example, or you know funnels or pop-ups to be able to show people lead magnets and try and get them on your email list, or any way that you want to try and grow your audience, even like community pages, things like that. You can do whatever you like with your own website. You can style it however you like, you own it forever and it's your home base for the podcast. But obviously the downside is that there's a bit more maintenance, there's a bit more work to actually create and work it. So that's the pros and cons and you can choose which one you like and you're not stuck. You know, if you start with just the host-based website to keep it easy, you can change over to your own site 20, 30, 40 episodes down the line. So you're not stuck with the choice you make initially. We've got a full guide on how this all works, how you can set up your own site, particularly in WordPress, but also a few other options as well. If you go over to the guide that's in the description below, just look for how to set up a website for your podcast, link down below. So how do those host run websites work? Let's go into that just for a second. They are generally pretty simple. All you do is you create the episode, you upload your audio, put in a title, a description, all the other metadata, and then the host themselves create a page based on that, and they add that to your website. And then if you go to the website URL, generally it's something.thehost.com, so if it's Buzzsprout, it'll be podcraft.buzzsprout.com, or if it's Captivate, it'll be uh, podtools.captivate.com. Now we've tested all of these out. Captivate do offer a really good podcast host website. They've got quite a lot of functionality in there, less limited than most of them. Buzzsprout's is decent as well. If you want to check them out, go over to our podcast one. So podcast is our podcast on how to run a podcast, very meta, how to launch, how to run, how to grow, how to monetize. Um, if you go over to podcraft.buzzsprout.com, you'll see the Buzzsprout site for it. But we've also got it on our own site over at thepodcasthost.com. You'll find that at podcraft.net. Podcraft.net, that'll shortcut you onto the podcast host website in the right place. So you can see how the two compare. You can see our own site versus the Buzzsprout site, and you can see some examples of how those work. Okay, the bit you're all worrying about, the bit you all want to know, how do you get it into the directories themselves? Well, I mean, imagine a world where you had to actually go through a hundred different directories and submit to them all. Luckily, that's not the case, okay? Your podcast host takes care of nearly all of this. You do have to do a couple of steps though. So whoever you sign up for, generally they'll have a page that will guide you through this. Some of them will be automated. So for example, going to Spotify, sometimes the host will have a button that presses, uh, actions something that sends your podcast off to Spotify automatically. But others like Apple Podcasts, for example, require you to set up an Apple Podcasts account. So over at Podcasts Connect, they call the platform and then you could submit the RSS feed automatically, or yourself, I should say. So you do submit to them manually, mostly, but sometimes it's automatically, and you'll see that in your podcast host. So if you sign up for Captivate, Buzzsprout, Castos, Transistor, any of our kind of top recommended podcast hosts, go straight to the distribution page, and they'll give you a guide to how it works in there. But that's the thing, once you've submitted, once you've submitted it once, RSS feed to the directories, then that's it done. From then on, every time you create a new episode in your host, it's sent automatically to the directories. You don't need to do anything else, okay? Now, you might still be panicking that there's too many directories out there to worry about that you have to submit to, but actually, 
In reality, if you submit to the top two, three, four, then you're covering all of them because a lot of the smaller directories like listener app directories, like pocket casts and the like, they tend to draw from the bigger directories. So they'll take their listings from Apple Podcasts, for example. So if you submit to Apple Podcasts, to Spotify, to Google Podcasts, potentially tune in radio because it kind of covers a lot of the smart devices like Alexa, then you've covered nearly all your bases. And again, your host will give you a little recommendation of the ones to go through. But if you cover all three of them, and maybe Amazon Podcasts, they're starting to grow a little bit, but don't worry too much about that. As long as it's Apple Podcasts, Spotify, you're covering a massive amount of the potential listeners to your show and just about all of the listening apps. Okay, so how do you upload a podcast to your own website? Let's get into a bit of detail on that as well. So once you've created your website, whether it's WordPress, Wix, whatever it is, remember we've got a guide on this. If you still need to figure out how to make your own website, the uh, link in the description below about how to create a website for your podcast. But once you've done that, you have full control over that site. Particularly think this is useful if you're looking to monetize your show. For example, if you wanna run sponsorship, uh, for example, been able to track visitors to your site much more easily by using the kind of background tracking tools that you can install on something like a WordPress site or get it custom done by a developer, then that's so much more powerful because you can track really well how many people are coming to your podcast site from sponsors or you know visiting those show notes. Sponsors love to see that data. So it's great to have your own site that you can really heavily track who's visiting and why they're visiting and where they're visiting, how long, all that kind of stuff. But how do you create episodes there? Well, the big thing here is that you will be creating separate blog posts for every episode. So once you've published an episode on your podcast hosting platform, for example, you've typed in the title, you've put a description into the podcast hosting platform, you've uploaded the audio, best thing to do is then take a copy of that title and that description, go over to, let's say your WordPress site, your own WordPress site, create a new blog post there, copy in the title, copy in the description, uh, the show notes, I'd always encourage you to build out those show notes, have a good amount of show notes in there. You know, you're looking for 400, 500 words. I'll put a link down below about how to create great show notes so you can go over and see what kinds of stuff to include in there, why it's worth doing that as well, because I know it's a bit of a pain. But if you create that, that blog post, then the final step is embedding a player. The player is what actually helps the listener to then play the episode, as you'd guess from the player, the podcast player, you take an embed code from the host. So all of the top hosts, again, they let you take an embed code for every episode. Go into, let's say, Captivate, Buzzsprout, open up the episode page, and over on the side or on a menu, somewhere on that episode page, there will be a grab embed code button. So you press that, you copy the embed code from the little window there. It's a little bit of HTML code, don't need to know how it works. All you need to do is copy it, then go back to your WordPress site, and it'll work the same in just about any other kind of site too. And in WordPress particularly, you create a new block that's called custom HTML. So there's a block in WordPress called custom HTML, and you paste it in there. And that's all you need to do. So you're taking this bit of code and you're pasting it onto your site, and you can place it anywhere on your episode page. So you've put in your title, you've put in your description, you've put in the player, you've built out some show notes, click publish, and that is that episode live on your website, okay? The only other thing to think about potentially is categorization. If you've got a website that has lots of other stuff like blog posts, videos, um, all sorts of different things, service pages, products, all that kind of thing, it's worth creating a category just for your podcast. That's what we do for PodCraft. I mentioned it earlier, but if you go over to podcraft.net, that redirects towards thepodcasthost.com forward slash, I think it's podcraft hyphen podcast. <laughs> I think that's the URL. But we've got that as a category. That is a category in WordPress where we post our episodes for that. And that means you can have a category archive page. You can direct people to that URL and it'll show all just the podcast episodes and not any of the other blog posts and all that kind of stuff. So it's worth separating it out in that way. Quick mention, it's worth saying, when I'm saying WordPress, WordPress.com is kind of a hosted type of website. It's a bit like using the, the hosting platform's website. It's hosted by them. It's not really your site. So if you're using WordPress.com, really what I'm talking about when you own your own website is WordPress.com 
wordpress.org. So you download the software for WordPress, you install it on your own server and it's your own website that you own. That's where you get the control. So just in case there's any confusion there, that's the difference. WordPress.com hosted on the WordPress servers, WordPress.org, you can download the software and put it on your own. And that is the website really you wanna create. Again, we've got a guide on this. So we try and make it as easy as possible. It's really not that hard to do actually. It's not very technical. Link in the description below around how to create a website for your podcast. I'm often asked about the tech behind it, you know, how the RSS feed works. If you're not interested in this, skip this chapter. But if you are, just a quick summary of how it works. Remember that the RSS feed is kind of like the, the signal, the, the, it's a list of your episodes. This is the thing that distributes your podcast out to all of the directories. Again, the directories are not hosting anything. All they're doing is reading that RSS feed, which is a big list of your episodes, and then showing that to potential listeners. And then every time a listener goes into Apple Podcasts and hits subscribe and presses play, Apple Podcasts then goes to the RSS feed. It looks in the RSS feed for the file URL. It can see in the RSS feed where the file is stored on your podcast hosting platform, and it pulls that file over from the hosting platform and sends it straight to the listener. So it's kind of like an intermediary. It's like a middleman in between the two. A kind of analogy is to think of your, your own website as the storefront, okay? Whether that's on a host or whether it's your own website, that's the storefront. That's where listeners go and they find it. And then the directories are more like a, a catalog, you know? The, your products really are on your storefront, on your website but the catalog, the directories show all these lists so that people can go through the catalog and go, I like that podcast, I like that episode. And then the catalog orders it through your storefront, but really the media host is the warehouse where those products are actually stored. So it goes through you, through to the warehouse, and then the warehouse sends out those audio files, throws them over to the player, and that's where they're actually played. So I hope that helps you make a little bit more sense around how RSS feeds work, where the files are actually stored, how it kind of works with listeners. The cool thing is, this is all so simple these days. You barely have to worry about any of this. Listeners definitely don't. They just go in their player, Apple Podcasts, Pocket Casts, Overcast, whatever it is, they press subscribe, they press play, and the magically appears. You know, the audio just plays, so they don't have to care. But if you're interested, that's kind of a bit more about how it works. Another question I get is often, is there a way to include or combine your editing, your recording, you know, how you put together your show with that hosting? And I'll say our tool Alitu, that's exactly what it's designed to do. So Alitu, the podcast maker app, it does call recording, solo recording. So you can create your recordings in there. You can create that audio. It does audio cleanup. So it'll do the noise reduction or leveling. Make sure you sound all polished as well. And then it'll chuck it into the episode builder. The episode builder is where you can add, you know, adverts, it adds your music and the fades automatically. You can pop in any segments, you know, any intros you can record in there. Um, you can do whatever you like and you can edit it too. So you can cut out the silences, the mistakes, the coughs, all that kind of stuff. There's a fully built audio editor right in there too. And right now we have hosting in beta testing. And actually by the time this video comes out, it should be almost ready to go. So you might well be able to go over there and sign up straight away. But we do have hosting, so you can combine it. That's the thing. So you can create your podcast in Alitu and just publish directly there in our own hosting. And if you do choose to actually go with another host, absolutely fine, understandable, then you can go and link it up. So you can link up to some of the top hosts like Captivate, Buzzsprout, Transistor, and publish direct from Alitu to those hosts as well. So whether you choose to use Alitu's inbuilt hosting or whether you choose to use another host, you can create your show in there from recording to cleanup to editing, and then you can publish direct to your host without having to worry about going to any other platform out there. So it'd be cool if you're going to give it a try. It's a seven day free trial, so you can test out for a couple of episodes, see if it works for you. You can get it over at alitu.com, A-L-I-T-U.com. So let's tie up with a little around tools. People always ask this too when they're thinking about uploading, podcast hosting, all that. What tools do you need? What's the best tool stack? For podcasting, you probably realize there's a lot could be involved. You've got hosting, you've got potentially recording, editing, uh, host, all those different things. There's so many bits in there. Obviously, that is something we tried to solve with our tool Alitu. So Alitu.com combines the recording, the editing, the audio cleanup, the hosting. But 
There's lots of other tools out there as well if you want to go and check them out. Rather than go off on a whole tangent around it, I've got a few links for you down in the description. We've got a few around the different types of tools you can use for recording, for editing, for hosting, for audio cleanup, all that kind of stuff. Just pop down to the description and you'll get all of our tool tools. It's what we love to talk about. We're quite geeky about it over at thepodcasthost.com. So you'll see all of our tools coverage right over there. So just to tie up, really what it comes down to in uploading your podcast is to find a good podcast hosting service. So if you want a couple of quick suggestions, quick solutions, try out Buzzsprout as a really good value, good quality option. Uh, we've got a link in the description below to sign up. There's an affiliate link there. So we do get a little bit of commission, help support our, cost, uh, our content, no extra cost to you. That'd be appreciated. And you get a $20 Amazon gift card if you sign up through our link as well for free. And then you've got Captivate as well, a little bit higher cost, but more features, more growth stuff in there too. You'll find a link to Captivate below as well. Now, Alitu, of course, as well, has hosting in it now too. So if you want editing plus call recording plus audio cleanup and some hosting in it too, like I said, it's in beta testing right now, but very soon we'll go entirely public. So if you sign up and hosting isn't available yet, just get in touch with our support team and you can sign up for the beta test of the hosting. But likely when you're watching this video, it will be entirely live and you'll be able to see it on the Alitu site. Just go over to alitu.com a-L-I-T-U dot com and you can use a seven day free trial to give it a shot. And of course, there's so much more than just uploading your podcast and making your podcast a success. We've got a full guide to this. If you're at your early stages, do go over and check out our How to Start a Podcast Guide. It's enormous. It includes everything. Enor enormous, but concise, I'll say. <laughs> so it guides you through it in the shortest possible steps. And there's about 20 steps in there. But you could do one little step a day and just spend a few minutes a day just getting your, you know, making your way through it, taking step by step so that even over two or three weeks, you can get your show out there into the world. You'll find a link to that down in the description or a quick one is thepodcasthost.com forward slash start and I'll take you right there. And there you have it. That's the lot. That's how you'll see your podcast on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. As always, links to all of the stuff I've talked about in the description below and I'll see you on a future video, unless we see you on Spotify first. <laughs>